week three now, I believe, of spring practices. I guess, what have you seen from your group that you've liked? And, uh, you know, what do you think still needs some work? Um, the run game, just, to, I mean, Jared, just start out with. I mean, it's been, that, that's been the best transition to flow in from last year. And, I mean, obviously, Coach Kidley is not, I mean, his his personnel from last year wasn't a big, you know, heavy two tight ends. And it's good that he can now, he can now call even more stuff. So, the run game is the, big, the biggest emphasis of what I enjoy seeing. Right now, we're not used to the fact that we're put on islands in this offense. So um, now it's trying to bring the incorporate a more heavy pass. You know, it was more we were a little bit more protected last year with a little bit more slide protection. We were never put out on an island that we like we are now. But because the quarterback has so much control and the center has so much control, now our tackles need to understand that you know that it's it's going to be a one on one battle every single time. And so I like where we're at right now. I just think we can get a lot better at that. Hey, Coach, this is Hunter Smith with WBKO. You know, um, now that you guys have had some practices under your belt, how have you seen that relationship that you and Kitley have previously at Texas Tech kind of kind of flow over into uh, spring practice? I think it's it's meshed really well. I mean, it's not it, – it's, you know, he – the things that – the things that if if we didn't know each other, the thing would be, you know, he'd come to he'd have to come to somebody different and be like, all right, here's the situation and here's what, how I, I want it taught. Now he can breeze by and be like, you know, he can point to a position. I'm like, we're on the same we're on the same page about it, about it. So that's I mean, I think meshing has been super, super easy, to be honest. I mean, not to mention we've been in a group message for the past five years. So it's not like we ever even made lost contact. You know, we're talk, calling each other one on one and we're. And in constant contact. So that's kind of the beauty of coaching these days, where if you have a good group of guys that you're with, you're usually in contact with them at all times. It's not, you know, once a year at the convention, you're like, oh, let me tell my life story of what I've been doing for the past 364 days. You know what I mean? So it's been good. Uh, you know, you guys get Cole back, you get Mason back, starters from last year's team, those three interior guys, um, you know, Jordan, um, Seth, Tyler Witt trying to replace those guys, I guess, who are you looking at now, you know, maybe filling those roles? So the first, so the first fill in that we, we brought in was Bo Wilson from Nebraska. The second one that jumped in the boat was Cam uh, Sage from BGSU. So it was, those are our right now our fill ins. The difference is, so Rusty Stats has done a phenomenal job of just being able to play all three interiors. Um, and then you got Gunnar Britton, who's done a phenomenal job of being able to swing from tackle to center. So the biggest thing is losing those three guys is was a, like, you know, a kick in the you know where at first. But the difference is you have so much depth behind them that's been waiting to play that they they have more than exceeded it where I thought where I originally thought we were going to start. They were day one. I was like, this is going to be a lot more simple than I thought. So now I can I can spend a lot more time coaching exactly the like, you know, what we want to schematically do instead of being like, Hey, let's work on your footwork. Let's do all this stuff. There, there's been a lot of guys in this room that have been waiting to play. So that's, that's going to be really exciting for them. And have those, uh, any of those more inexperienced guys that have been waiting for their turn Have they have it, have any of them really kind of stuck out to you so far this spring? I'm not going to lie. The way that, the way that Gunner has been able to flip in and run center and the way that Rusty's been able to literally not come out and come out and, and bump through from left guard to center to right guard and our rotation when we're two spotting things when we have when we have limited numbers and the young guys are down on the other side and the older guys are on, on the other side it's been phenomenal there's there's no I can't give more props to those two guys for filling in the roles of what they're doing and being able to um, not come out and I mean all they need me to do is walk by give them a squirt and sometimes they don't even want it you know I mean and they've been rolling you know, that's five or six guys, and it sounds like they're very versatile. Um, but, you know, is how? what do you think of, like, the depth behind those five or six? I Truthfully, I think we have seven seven guys, and I think there's a big – because, once again, I go back to if, if you start that long, there now there's kind of a bigger gap between the guys that are going to be playing and the guys that need to be developed. And, I mean – Honestly, it's it's not a bad thing. It's just a di it's just kind of different. You're used to you know a normal transition of like okay this group's gonna leave next year and then and then we have boom boom boom. Whereas it's really there's a clump of kids that are probably about six about six of them that are all very very young. And then there's a huge gap to the guys that I'm talking about when it's like you know the seven seven guys that would be in the immediate rotation. 
And I, I, you know, get, just to get in touch on the versatility, how important is it that you have guys able to effectively play multiple positions on the offensive line? I mean, I'm all about it. I mean, I had to do, I had to do it. There, there's only a couple of people that are special that don't get to do it. It's always your prima donna tackles, you know, your left tackle, your right tackle. They always get to, they, if you try to keep them, you know, because they're always like, I don't want to go inside. I don't want to be a guard, you know. And, and they're like, okay, well, you know, you have the hardest job, but you, of course, you never want to play guard. Um, me, they stuck me out there one time. They about, you know, they about broke me off because I'm a midget at 6'3". So I like to stay inside, but I had to play left guard, right guard. You got to figure it out. And, you know, my natural, obviously, was center. But someone like Rusty and Cam, those inside guys, they're they're going to live my life. And I, I tell them that every day. If, if, if I had to do it, you're going to have to do it because the, the fact of the matter is we're going to need you. You're, you're probably not going to get through a whole season without somebody getting banged up. You know, kind of going back to Cole and Mason, you know, we only really get to know them from what we've seen through Zoom these last couple of years. Um, you know, Cole seems pretty serious. Mason, um, you know, he seems pretty, keeps things light sometimes with us. Um, you know, what have you seen from those two guys from like a leadership perspective where they're the guys that have had? Well, they, they crack me up because they literally, how do I say this? They're polar opposites. They're in there the exact same person. So there's no... Like the same things Cole struggles with are the same thing Mason struggles with. It's just a height difference. And then one is, yes, Mr. Jokester, and the other one is like super serious. But they're don't get them fooled. Like they are the exact same human when it comes to like football. Just one is one is more quiet leader, the other one is a vocal leader. And you can tell obviously through interviews and when you come to practice exactly who that is. So they've matured a bunch, but they, I mean, they crack me up because they there was a lot of emphasis on them to make calls and do things last year. And that's been kind of pulled away because the, the direction goes into the center and it's all about him making corrections and points. And so you can tell, you know, they're grasping for that. They want to be on TV pointing at people, you know, making sure like everybody sees them. And I'm like, no, let's pull that, pull that hand down. Let's let the center do it. So it's been fun to watch them grow up and they've played a lot of ball and I'm really happy that we have them. You know, Coach Sheldon has talked about executing at a high level, eliminating those little things that, like, the false starts that can have a really big impact in a ball game. How have you seen your team kind of progress to get to that – more to that level of being able to execute um, effectively? I just see, like, there are certain days where you can tell, like, affects the offense pretty bad. It, it starts to kind of play. You can see it trickle over. Um, if we can limit that, my, my biggest thing is we, you can eliminate that. You can – I mean, you can change an entire ball game. So, me – I mean, I told you all first interview in. If you're if you're going to false start for me, you there's there's something coming afterwards. So there's it's not it's not it's not we're 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 not worried about punishment, but it's like just understand the play. And if you understand the play and the process, you should have no issues. So I'm real big on if you're don't don't stop thinking when you're tired. You know what I mean? Like don't just don't just get up to the line and jump all sides or be leaning into it or be you know staring down where you are so hardcore that you can't focus in on anything else. It's to me, if we're going to play without thinking, then we should be relaxed, ro ready to roll. And if anything, I'm talking crazy to the guy in front of me more than I'm worried about, you know, just the intensity of it. So um, penalties are always taken care of at every program. That's, I mean, it is what it is. It's like somebody dropping a ball and they go do 10 push-ups. It's just a known thing at offensive line. If you're going to jump, I mean, you're going to get probably, you know, some type of punishment. Now, the only thing that ever bothers me is when a center's off sides. And if you see it in a game, it's unbelievable when a center yanks the ball for half a count and then they call it on him. It's like you literally can snap the ball. So those are the only ones that ever bother me. You're going to jump off sides. I jumped off sides. The entire world jumps off sides. It happens. Go do your little tension push-ups. Move on with your life. And I know you mentioned uh, Cameron Stage, uh, transfer from BGSU. Um, you know, I guess what was it like getting him, you know, from the portal here to uh, Western Kentucky? Uh, it's kind of funny. It was kind of a funny deal because he was the last class that I recruited in. So yeah, that would have been the last year, 2000, 2018. So he hits, the, he hits the portal and I've already, I've had him on an official visit before, you know what I mean? And it's like, you call, there's no, that's, that's the funny thing about the portal these days. So these kids, they enter the portal, they call you and you, it's literally like, you never, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, these kids, it's easy. Bo Wilson was completely different. I had no idea who Bo was. I literally turned on his film, got in contact with him. You recruit him, and the crazy thing is about the portal. I mean, these these kids, if they if they're into hearing a spiel, I mean, some of them are, but the majority of them are like, 
I get it. It's college football. So what are you offering and what, like, how do you coach and how does this work? So I come, I, I mean, my, my recruiting style is a little bit different than, than most, but I mean, easily even uh, someone like uh, knowing Cam and, and, you know, taking on an official visit, he hits the portal, he calls me and it's like, it's just a simple, it's a very simple transition. Now the difference is he knows, he knows when I'm agitated, whereas the other kids, you know, they, they haven't figured that out. He knows when I'm in a really good mood and the other kids haven't figured that out. So that's the funny part about it. I can see him smiling when I'm like telling certain jokes and the rest of the kids are like, oh, is he joking or is he freak? Is he about to freak out? You know, so those are, those are the, those are the easy ones for him. Coach, were you out at uh, Meredith's Pro Day this morning? I was. I was in uh, just kind of, I was there too. Uh, just to kind, of, kind of what was your thoughts on what you saw? I thought they did. I thought they did both a really good job, honestly. And I was really happy to see that they got pulled aside to actually run more drills with uh, snapping and then having to fire off into the pad. And I believe it was the the Chargers spent an extra time with them snapping. And I want to say the Titans were they well they ran the whole pro day in the first place, so um, they did all those drills. I was excited to see what they did. Their numbers. I, I was I was very pleased with the numbers that Jordan put up when when his forty time. Um, most people think that his knock is that he's stiff because of the way that he walks, but he's not, he's pretty limber. He's at, he's, he had, uh, miles paid, had a great L, L drill. I remember seeing that and I was kind of in and out, but I did watch their entire workout go through. And I think, I mean, I, I think they got a shot. So we're going to see, we're going to see where that goes. I'm going to keep kind of tabs on them to kind of figure out what teams have called them, um, leading up to the draft and, and kind of go from there. So it was, I thought it was a pretty good pro day for them.